Hi everyone, Pierre Rick from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how you can use shape keys to create stylized effect on your animated character in Blender. This video is a free sample of one of the 150 videos that are going to be included in my new course Alive. This Blender animation course is gonna be available on next week, the 13th of August. Stay tuned and check the link in the description below. In this video, I will show you in detail how to create shape keys and how to apply them to your animated character. Let's get started. The shape keys allows you to deform an object into another shape. They are also known as morph target or blend shapes in Maya or ZBrush, for example. Shape keys are often used to create facial expression for your character that can be triggered later on. It's great to create advanced facial expression or quick test for your character. Then the rigger can create controllers so that you can trigger those shape keys at will in your animation. Shape keys are a modification or a transformation of the mesh. So you will be able to find the shape keys panel into the mesh data of your object. To create a shape key, we simply need to click the plus icon on the right of the panel. The first shape key to be created will be automatically named Basis. It's some kind of snapshot of the current position of each vertices in your mesh. Whenever we jump into edit mode, with a vertex selected, in the properties panel, we can see the current location of this vertex. The basis shape key will record the position of each vertex for our mesh. And this specific basis shape key is going to be the point of reference for the next shape key. It's a bit like the rest pose for a character rig. From there, we can create another shape key by clicking the plus button. And now Blender is no longer naming the shape key basis, but key number one. Now to be able to animate this shape key, we need to create a first deformation. You need to be in edit mode. And the most important thing is to make sure that the key is currently selected. To select it, you just need to left click it and it will be highlighted. From there, I can move one of the vertices of my mesh. You can move as many vertices as you want. And as soon as I will press tab to exit edit mode, my mesh will return to the shape it had on the basis shape key. From there, I can activate my shape key by simply increasing the value of key number one from 0 to 1. Blender will automatically interpolate the shape key, 1 being the shape key we have currently built, 0 being the basis. To understand how shape keys work, I will create a new shape key. Then I will enter edit mode and I will rotate my whole character. Note that you can rename your shape keys as any other data in Blender by simply double clicking its name. As we have rotated our object in edit mode by triggering the shape key, I'm expecting it to rotate in space, exactly as I'm doing here in object mode. I'm going back onto my model and I will trigger the shape key. What's weird here is that it seems that my object is getting scaled while I'm triggering the shape key. But this is not the case. This is currently how shape keys work. And to better understand it, I've tracked one of the vertices, parenting a small sphere to this vertex. If you carefully focus on this vertex, you will see that it moves in a straight line in space. And this is because a vertex only have location coordinates. And Blender will simply move each vertices in a straight line from their original basis position toward the keyframe position over the keyframe value that goes from 0 to 1. So you can't perform a proper rotation using shape key. You can only perform translation of individual vertices. So even if the final output looks a bit like a rotation, this is not a rotation. Each vertex is moving in a linear fashion from its current basis position to the shape key position. Now, to better understand shape keys extrapolation and their behavior, I have created this arrow shape and I will create the basis shape key and a first key. 
From there, I will jump into edit mode and with my shape key number one selected, I will move by one blender unit the top vertices of the arrow. Now, when I trigger my shape key, those vertices will move in a linear fashion by one blender unit on the Z axis. But since the shape key occurs at the mesh data level, I can rotate my data container, my object, and trigger the shape key. And the shape key will behave as expected. Now, if we have a closer look to our shape keys information, we have a minimum range and a maximum range. This will allow us to whether clamp or increase the interpolation range of the shape key. If I clamp the maximum value to 0.5, I won't be able to go further. If I now allow a maximum value of 2, the vertices of the arrow's head will move two times further away in a linear fashion. If I allow a negative minimum range, I will be able to extrapolate the current shape key backward or negatively, and the vertices will just move the opposite direction. You can combine as many shape keys as you want, and this is how we generally create complex facial expression. I have created a couple of additional shape keys, and now I can trigger all the shape keys at the same time or combine different values the coordinate modification of each vertices will be added one on top of each other based on the factor of each shape key. If you need to edit your mesh, make sure that you have selected the basis shape key or you will be editing the current shape key, not the basis. We can use vertex group to limit the influence of a shape key. In the vertex group panel, I will create a new group and I will assign at 100% the tip of the arrow and with a value of 50% the pace of the arrow. Now, if I assign this vertex group to the first shape key by selecting it in the vertex group slot and I now trigger the shape key, you can see that the tip of the arrow is moving at its full range while the other vertices only move by 50% of their range. If I now select one of the vertex and I exclude it by removing it from the vertex group, it will no longer move. The vertex group value directly influence the amount of the shape key motions that will be applied to each vertex. Finally, you can use other shape keys as a basis. This way you can create complex transformation by changing the point of reference. So let's now have a look on what we could do with those shape keys onto our current animation. I will hide the background and FXs collection so that we have a clearer viewport. And I will directly select my character object. But since the character was linked into this scene, I can't modify any of the mesh data. To be able to edit those data, I need to make the mesh local and also the object of the character local. With both the container and its data local, I can now add a new shape key. Since we will directly be editing our character model, I can hide the rig and I will scrub through the animation and I will try to spot the moment where the character is moving very fast, like this hook motion, for example. I've already created smears using the rig, but now I can add extra details using shape keys. Clicking the plus button, I will add a new shape key. I will call it hook01 and I will jump into edit mode, pressing the tab key. To be able to see your character posed in edit mode, make sure to enable all the display options in the armature modifier. From there, with my shape key selected, I can start editing my character. The process is simply to pull some of the vertices of the character toward its previous position as if part of his mesh was dragging during this quick motion. I need to disable the X symmetry while in edit mode. And now I can pull some of the vertices back and start to create my effect. The important thing is that those effects will be seen from the camera view. So it's important to make them work from the camera view. You can sure edit your mesh from any point of view you want, but make sure that it does look good from your camera point of view, as it is what is going to be rendered. If you want to create broader shapes or move multiple vertices at once, you can enable the editing follow-up. Once you are done with your first shape key, 
you can exit edit mode and trigger it by changing its value. As seen in chapter 2, shape keys as most Blender data can be keyed by pressing I over the keyframe value. Then I can edit this value whenever I want over my animation. This will activate or deactivate the current shape key, or if you change the value over multiple frames, Blender will interpolate the value of the shape keys. For example, on the previous frame, I can add a bit of the shape key to initiate this transformation and set it to zero on the previous key. Once you're happy with your first effect, you can add more of them. When working on a shot like that, this is going to be the final touch, the final effect. So I advise you to create multiple shape keys. For example, here I want to add few details on the arm too. I will create a dedicated shape key instead of adding it on the same shape key as before. This way, it's gonna be easier for me to edit whether the shape key of the arm or the head, delay one compared to the other, or simply remove it without destroying what I've done for the head. Or you will also be able to show different version to your art director, for example. In my case, I've also created a shape key during the kick impact to try to blend with the previous shape. This kind of effect on top of the smear effect will fake motion blur and will help your audience to better read your animation. And as explained in the previous video, whatever you do to improve the readability of your animation will take it to the next level.